What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of Honda Street Garage. Finally, been filming for the last couple days, so you're about to see that. I want to say a big thank you to hitting 75,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for all the support that you've given me. And uh, here we go. See you back in a minute. What up, boys and girls? Ladies and gentlemen, back with another episode. And today we're going to look at the EJ1 underneath it. There's a popping going on. So um, I came here to my buddy shop. My buddy shop. And we're gonna put it on a lift and get underneath and uh, check the suspension underneath and see if we can find anything that is popping or making noise. At one point, the like I came home, it was worse, it was popping worse, and I checked the upper control arms and these were not as tight as they should be. So I tightened them up and then it stopped. Like it didn't stop, stop, but it, was, it wasn't as bad until I took like a hard turn and then it, uh, it started popping. So, yeah. Maybe we can also see what's going on with the exhaust. Somebody was like, maybe it's your sway bar legs. I almost want to say it's these bushings or... What, what compliance bushings that way? see anything specifically broken. Maybe it's this one. <gasps> Ooh, maybe it's that. I think that could be it. That bushing looks completely shot. This one? Yeah. Now I need a whole new lower control arm. That one was... Whoa. Cool. Yeah, I know. I don't want to go too get too ham on it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> These trannies will crack. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure they're tight enough. I'm pretty sure that's not what I'm hearing. I'm not hearing the tranny move around. Just changing the oil. Okay. All right, so we're going over this thing with a fine tooth comb so we can get this thing back out on the roads. Um, I've just been a little concerned lately because I've been hearing the popping, but it seems like we've uh, figured whatever it is out. I don't know, maybe we'll rediscover it once I get it back on the roads. I don't know, but it is not making the popping noise now in the front suspension. Uh, now we're doing a fresh oil change, and then from there, we can take this thing out on the roads and beat it up. So I've been thinking about doing something different and doing something, um, maybe stepping up in some sort of way uh, with the EJ1. Maybe it's time to do something a little different. Maybe it's time for a K24 block. Uh, maybe some drag cartel dropping camshafts. Um, but the first order of business is definitely to get K-Pro, which I'm hoping to get very soon. And then get this thing on a dyno and see what kind of power we can pull out of a stock K20A2. And then go from there. Um, I'm thinking possibly about doing a K24 bottom end, which is quite feasible uh, from what I've been looking into. And, or just doing a straight K24 A2 swap. But uh, I don't know. I've been thinking about just changing it up. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments below! <laughs> What's your vote? Yes. Uh, and then the rain happened, so by the time we got up to this beautiful road, uh, everything was soaking wet, and now we are going down the mountain in a very sketchy um, situation, because not only is the road wet and there's leaves all over the road, but there are deer running through, you know, these mountain passes. They're just, they're falling, you know, down these sides. It's crazy. I just figured I'd pull the camera out, which obviously does not sound like a great idea at the moment um, but you know it is what it is I didn't bring the GoPro so no loss I'm gonna come back to this road for sure because it's definitely a pretty road 
definitely great to have a nice drive on. What's up guys, it's the next day and it is a beautiful day outside for sure. Now yesterday I was able to uh, work on the front end and I figured out, we didn't really figure out what the popping was, but the popping's not there anymore. And we gave the car a uh, fresh oil change. All right, so we made it back to the shop and of course, the power's out, so. Not that that's a big deal, it's just not a whole lot of light in here, it's a little dark. But I kinda want to raise the rear up a hair. You can see, you know, I'm rubbing here in the hard corners and I just kinda wanted to maybe raise the rear up just a hair more, just to give it a little bit more uh, you know, clearance for when I'm taking those hard turns and stuff. So yeah, I might knock that out and I'm still waiting to hear back to see if what's gonna happen today, but otherwise I'll get to other news later. Yeah, I'm sweating to death because here in South Carolina, it's always super humid. It's really not even that hot outside. It's only about 80 something degrees, but uh, anyway, so I've already adjusted the other side and uh, for height, and I'm just gonna show you me doing this side because it's the same thing on either side. Obviously, underneath here, it is filthy from driving yesterday on that, or that road yesterday. Just from driving around yesterday, I need to go uh, hit the car wash and clean all this stuff up because it's not supposed to look like this. It's supposed to be yeah, nice and clean. Now these are the old school style of adjusting coilovers. The new uh, world coilovers, um, you, know, you would remove the bottom. Um, you take this bolt out and you would actually spin the bottom of the coilover up. That's how all, a lot of the new generation coilovers are. However, these are Tane Super Streets. They have adjustable dampening. And so to raise the height up, I'm basically doing it the old school way. Um, I'm spinning the perches. Obviously, this is the lock perch that I've unlocked and I've been spinning and spin it however many times you need to go. I think I need to do like two more because I did a total count. Nine. And 10. Um, so what I did was is I did 10, I had them measured out before. Normally I would grab a tape measure and uh, measure them exactly on either side, but uh, all I did was uh, spin it 10 times up on both sides. And I didn't want to go up very high. Now I clearly wound this down to give me space and room. And then, so I'm gonna wind this up to it and it should be pretty even. Uh, we really won't know until uh, you know we go Run a couple corners and stuff like that. So then I'm gonna take this and tighten it down. That locks it into place. We can put our wheel on, put it on the ground and see how she looks. Maybe go for a drive today, which is looking super promising. I really hope rain clouds don't roll in. All right, I think she's sitting pretty good. It's not too high. To me, I like a little bit of rake on it. Such a beautiful day. So here's the news of the day. I took a ride and I went to HPT Autosport. Great guys, check them out on their website, hptautosport.com. Um, they sell a lot of K-Tune parts and vibrant parts, uh, engines, uh, all kinds of stuff. They even have dynos. Dynos. <laughs> they even have a dyno uh, for tuning. And I just went and picked up something. Oh, finally got the K-Pro. So we're gonna be working this K20 out. Hopefully we can get this thing on a dyno relatively soon and uh, see what this K20 can do. So I'm excited, now I gotta get back to town, which is gonna be about an hour's drive uh, because it's about five o'clock on a Monday. I'm a Mac guy, so I gotta find a PC so I can register and uh, load a base map up to the K-Pro. Okay, we got this K-Pro here. And this laptop. So we got the ECU. It's an unboxing video. Port. 
Put in the cable. ECU is hooked to the internet, so we're gonna go plug it to the car. Okay, I have disconnected my PRC ECU, which is a stock uh, JDM Type R ECU, which is now for sale. Uh, I will post it on sale uh, on my Instagram, so check that if you're interested in it. You can use it with no immobilizer. Now we're gonna hook the Honda up. Plug it up. Uno. Dos. Tres. Okay, it is now hooked up. We're gonna, well, we have to, I guess, USB it. We'll see what it does, see if it even. Okay, so no fuel pump, no nothing. Raymond here is my personal tuner. You wanna hook it up to the... All right, so we're not street tuning it. We're just uh, trying to get a base map on this thing. All right, she's plugged up. Now I think you have to turn the key on, right? You gotta register first. Okay, now we've registered K-Pro. Now we're trying to load a base map up. Oh yeah, look at that. That's that race car life right there. <laughs> okay, is this the map? So this is low cam, high cam, um, those are ignition, fuel, low cam, high cam, uh, VTC actuator, low cam, high cam. Okay. Where's the, there should be like a... Ignition off. Alright guys, so it's the next day and I've been going at this all day yesterday at the end of the day and all day today trying to figure out what is going on. Um, basically to explain what's going on is that, so I put the K-Pro in the car and for some reason the check engine light wouldn't come on and the fuel pump wouldn't prime. Now when I use the PRC ECU you actually have to ground out the uh, fuel pump wire and that causes everything to come on. Because this is a factory ECU, uh, you don't do that. It doesn't work with these ECUs. So um, I disconnected that ground and nothing would happen. I've always had this weird thing where if the car was running and I put the car in reverse and I back up and I leave it in reverse, cut the key and take it out, the car would stay running until I took it out of reverse. Never really thought about that. Um, but then the odd thing is, is that I just happened to like put it in reverse. And sure enough, uh, the fuel pump prime and the check engine light came and flashed on. And so, you know, the car would start to run, but you'd have to keep it in reverse. So, I don't know. So what I did was is I jumped the reverse uh, switch uh, plug and the car will run. However, I'm getting codes for high voltage and some weird uh, other codes. So I'm not sure exactly what to do about this. Um, I'm not trying to say anything bad or, you know, talk trash, but I have a Chase Bay's harness and this would not be the first issue that I've ran into with it. I'm really lost on what exactly to do right now. If any other wiring company wants to, you know, reach out and help out the situation because K-Pro is quite expensive and, you know, uh, purchasing another harness is not really on my, uh, things to really be able to do right now so uh, my only option is to figure things out or um, I don't know you know just not go Honda for now until I can get another harness so it's one of those frustrating things I've waited all this time to get K-Pro so that I could finally go have this thing tuned and now it seems I've run into a, an entirely another issue big shout out to CJ's wiring who's actually helped me a lot today um, try to figure things out uh, even though he didn't have to. Uh, super nice guy. Okay, so this is where we stand at the moment. I'll turn the key on. We got our check engine light. Flashes off. I'm sure it's gonna come back. There it is. It's gonna come back on. Let's see if there's any other codes going on here. Okay, now there's two error codes. ELD circuit high voltage. Now this harness didn't even have a wire to wire in the ELD, so I don't know. Okay, so I've been taking a little bit of time um, to kind of reflect on what's been going on with the channel and the videos and 
stuff like that. And if most of you guys can tell, the, the channel's kind of been sort of all over the place the last, you know, couple months or whatever. I wasn't really enjoying what was happening and where things were going and you know so whenever that happens if you watch the channel long enough I like to change things up. One of the things that I've considered doing and really came up with the idea of doing and I've been going back and forth with a couple of friends and is that I've actually considered doing a K24 swap or either a K24 bottom end or a full K24 A2 swap in general. I'm not too sure 100% on whether or not I want to do the K20 head with the K24 or just go with the K24 in general. A lot of people have kind of suggested just go with the K24, it's reliable, you'll make good power and if you want to boost it down the road, uh, it's perfect for that too. And then of course, you know, a lot of people have suggested if you really want to make good power, put the K20 head on it, stay all motor and uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. Now before I could do any of that, one of the biggest things that I needed to take care of was get Han data. As you guys saw earlier, I picked up Han data. And so I was super excited about picking up Han data because that way, you know, we could finally take the car to a dyno, hit the dyno and see what kind of power we can get out of just a straight K20A2 and, um, you know, just liven up the car a little bit. And then of course, from what you've seen, obviously I'm having some issues with uh, the engine harness. And I don't really want to talk trash or make anything bad, but I have a Chase Bay's engine harness. You know, to be quite honest with you, I paid a lot of money for that harness and I was very excited about getting it when I got it, you know, about seven, eight months ago. It really hasn't given me a problem using the PRC ECU. Obviously, plugging up K-Pro, there's been some issues. Ultimately, what it's come down to is that, you know, over the years, a lot of things have changed. There's a lot of new companies uh, making much better products. And obviously, I've come to the acceptance I'm gonna have to get a new harness. It really comes down to, um, you know, I want it to be right. I want it to be reliable. I want it to work properly, you know. So this is kind of a roadblock. I need a harness to work properly to communicate with the Han data and before I can go uh, K24 or anything like that. So that's where I'm at and hopefully the next video you'll see, I will have a solution for that. And hopefully I'm trying to have a positive attitude and um, positive outlook of, you know, kind of moving forward with the EJ1 and the build because, you know, I really enjoy this car. It's super fun to drive and I've come to the realization that, you know, this is the car for the channel. This is really what the channel represents. That's where things are at. That's what's going on. And hopefully we're going to be pushing this thing forward soon. So if you guys want to stay tuned and see what happens with the uh, EJ1, uh, click that subscribe button. Click the bell because obviously there's been lots of issues with YouTube and notifications lately. Uh, click like if you like this video. I will see you in the next one. Peace out and keep living your dreams. Hey guys, if you like Honda Street Garage, help support the channel by picking up some merch. Go get yours now, link in the description below.